Hey, I'm Jason. I'm an amateur astronomer from Eastern Canada, and this is where I learn how to do sky things. Hello. So it's um, what feels like a pretty special night now. So uh, it's a super clear night. I've um, got a cool rig running, and it's all set up and ready to go. I just need to hit go, basically. Um, so I've had a couple of false starts. So the other night, I came out here and uh, I was with a friend and we tried to shoot the bubble nebula and I noticed that the autofocus was not working really at all so we focused it just using a Batnov mask it felt pretty good we got it going it was a pretty clear night actually uh, not perfectly clear but fairly clear and uh, so we let it go and that was that uh, then I collected everything in the morning, went to process or take a quick look at the data and found that most of the data was horribly out of focus, like big fat stars. It looked like somebody had kicked the instrument basically. And what I realized had happened was I've had on and off luck with the autofocus, um, just even at the best of times. And so I disabled, like when the uh, system does an automatic meridian flip, it by default wants to uh, then refocus. I disabled that a while ago. However, uh, I'm using the ASI Air Pro and it just did a firmware update, which I think restored a bunch of defaults. So what happened was we got it all set up and running. It ran for like an hour and a half or so did the meridian flip and then refocused, which totally broke the, fo uh, the focus and the rest of the night was just a complete wash. It was a huge bummer because I was just looking forward to it. It's, it's been a long time since we've had a night that clear where the instrument was working well, all that good stuff. So now that brings us to tonight. Um, tonight's another very clear night, uh, really clear actually. Tomorrow night is also supposed to be quite clear and I've been kind of working on getting a shot of the bubble nebula, uh, which is what Jeff and I shot. I, don't know if I mentioned that. Um, and then also in preparation for some camping trips and stuff like that, I got a Radian Raptor. Now, I've always been not really that impressed with my guide scope. And so part of the reason I wanted to get the Raptor is because I wanted to <laughs> use it as a guide scope, which um, might be a little excessive, but um, I think it's pretty cool. I actually have my ASI um, 294 MC Pro hooked up and there's even, um, what filters in there? The Optolong L Extreme. So uh, it is a color uh, camera, but it is shooting in, in uh, duo, duo band or whatever, um, hydrogen alpha mainly. Um, well, it's a star, so I guess it wouldn't be mainly hydrogen alpha. It would actually just be, yeah, through the through both bands, O2 and, uh, and, and hydrogen. Anyways, so it's actually set up here. It's, it's so dark, you can hardly see it but it's a very it's a very cool very wide field telescope it's crystal clear f4.5 and then i've got this dedicated astronomy camera on it so in terms of guide scope it is um overpowered to say the least uh the trick is the guiding right now isn't actually that ideal um and it's because it's really hard to balance this now um and the way that i got it balanced uh, by the i thought it was pretty well balanced but by the time i got to the guiding um Guiding is not that great. It's it's around like one arc second, and you know on a night like tonight, uh, with this gear, I would expect to get it closer to like a half, something like that. So, honestly, everything else has gone so well. You know, it's one of those things where I was really excited for the the new night, so I was really tempted to just sort of use the instrument as it was and not mess with it. But uh, because to do this, I had to take the whole scope off, open up these open up these rings here attach the guide scope to what is actually just the handle <laughs> um, and then put it all back up. So uh, that all worked really well. I got a really, really good polar alignment, um, which I'm hoping to now keep for a long time. Um, I didn't have any of those stupid issues where it, you know, has the time wrong or something and so it tries to point into the ground. Um, everything just has worked really, really well. So I think I'm gonna just kick this off. Auto guide is not perfect, but I'll I'll tweak that a bit in the future. Um, it's just too good of a night to waste any more of the night, night sky. Thanks very much. Hello everyone. Like I said in the earlier part of this video, uh, I took images of the Bubble Nebula. 
Um, I took it over the course of two nights. The the earlier part of this video was was recorded on the first night, and the and then yeah, there was a second night. Um, I'm not super happy with this photo. There's a lot wrong with it, uh, but to be honest, it's the best I've ever taken of it. I've tried this target a handful of times uh, and, and really never had a whole lot of luck. And I think I know what's gone wrong here. So um, more so than any other problem, I would say this just doesn't have enough data, period. You know, um, On the left here, I actually have the uh, oxygen three and hydrogen alpha channels. Uh, the hydrogen alpha you know, looks reasonable. Um, Again, you know, there's not a ton of data. I think there's only about two hours of used uh, of used process data um, in this sub. And then similarly for the oxygen, but the oxygen on top here just uh, really doesn't have much. I mean, you can see the bubble itself, but it's very noisy. Um, and then when I merged them, I was having a really hard time actually getting that uh, getting that oxygen data to come through and not just be swamped out by hydrogen alpha. Um, what made this a difficult process, uh, like image to process, I mean, was A, you know, the data just wasn't, sufficient um but b i normally would do this um channel merging and then use starnet to remove all the stars and then i will operate just on the nebula itself however when i did that with this nebula the very bright spot in the top left hand corner of the actual bubble uh bubble um created this really obvious artifact um that even when you merged the two uh back in was still present so unfortunately i couldn't take that approach which meant that all the color modifications and, and stuff like that that I did to the image, you know, happened on the stars as well. So as a result, they've got some pretty gnarly colors going on there uh, that I'm really not happy with. There's also that really bright star to the right of the bubble um, that I think really blew out in um, in the oxygen channel. And it looks kind of funky. Um, you know, I on the first night, I did have some guiding issues as well. Um, the second night was amazing guiding, actually. Um, but... You know, I, I don't know how much the guiding issues are really uh, evident in this image. Um, I wasn't using a field flattener, so near the edge of the image, there there definitely is some stretched stars. Um, and this is cropped in a little bit, but you can still kind of see it even at the edge of this one. But, you know, what are you going to do? I mean, like I said, this isn't a perfect image. It's not even a particularly good image, but it's the best I've been able to take so far. And uh, I think I'm going to stick with it for now. Um, we're not supposed to get any more clear nights for a little while now. So when we do, I think I'll go back to this and just take a bunch more oxygen and a little bit more hydrogen. Um, but you know, I don't know when that will be. And when the time comes, you know, maybe I'll get all excited about some other, some other thing to take a picture of. So for now I'm considering this one to be sort of the final image, but, uh, I, I do plan to add to this, um, a little more, but yeah, thanks very much.